Hello there my point-eared friends, and welcome to another lore video on the mysterious Eldar. The proper kind, not the BDSM kind. So after checking out the votes in the comments from the last Eldar video, I discovered, surprisingly actually, that most of you wanted to learn more about the craft worlds than anything else. And since I am a man of my word, here is a video that I wanted to make for a long time now, but only managed to do it now. An overview on what a craft world is and what it does. Also, don't forget to stay until the end of the video and vote on another future topic. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A craft world is a gigantic, planetoid sized spacecraft populated by the Craftworld Eldar. It travels through the void of space at sublight speed, carrying the greater remnant of the Eldar race after their fall. Each of them is a self-sufficient, independent realm with its own distinctive culture. Everyone is built upon a skeleton of Wraithbone, whose structure extends throughout the gigantic spacecraft. A similar skeletal core lies at the heart of most Eldar constructions and every one of their spaceships. In function, this core is similar to the blood vessels and nervous system of an actual living creature, pumping life-giving energy around the body and also transmitting the psychic impulses coordinating its many functions. Wraithbone is psychoconductive, and the core of a craft world acts as a self-replenishing reservoir of psychic power. This rib-like structure carries the energy throughout the entire length and breadth of the vessel, in a very real comparison, a craft world is a living entity, powered by psychic energy and responding in an organic way to the stimuli of psychic force. The power contained within it can be expanded as light and heat, and most shipboard devices could not actually function without the wireless psychic power grid running through the substructure of the craft world. The Eldar themselves refer to this grid as the Infinity Circuit a metaphysical neural structure studded with the spirit stones of the craft world's dead, their gestalt psychic collective serving as a source of power for the great vessel and its ghostly sentience. Before the great fall, the craft worlds were just vast Eldar commercial ships made of wraithbone. They were also effectively self-contained star-faring communities housing hundreds of Eldar families. Trading missions could take these Eldar thousands of light years away from the borders of their empire, separating the community from the Eldar homeworlds for centuries at a time. These colossal spacecraft would travel across the galaxy using the Eldar webway, trading with many intelligent alien races they encountered, before finally returning to the Eldar homeworlds centuries later. This meant that the Craftworld communities had already developed a strong sense of independence and self-reliance away from the heart of the Eldar civilization. An independence that prevented them from being infected by the increasing decadence and hedonism, which ultimately consumed their race. Because a Craftworld would only return to the Empire only three or four times in a thousand years, it was easy for them to perceive the degeneration of Eldar society while to the rest of the Eldar, the decline was too gradual to realize. As the final weeks leading to the Cataclysm were approaching, the various craftworld populations returned to the heart of the Eldar Empire, finding those worlds already in ruin, torn apart by an orgy of sadism which heralded the birth of the Chaos God Slanesh. The inhabitants of the craftworlds were horrified when they saw the change in their society. The Eldar Seers that stayed behind, and were uncorrupted still, enlisted the aid of the Craftworld Eldar, and undertook a titanic effort to save what was left of their people. Onto each Craftworld, the last uncorrupted people from each Eldar homeworld were loaded. Taking with them any Eldar that still remained sane, they fled the heart of the Eldar civilization, along with as much work of art, plant life and animal life they could cram onto their ships. The massive shockwave of Slanesh's awakening caught some of these craft worlds and destroyed them, alongside the Eldar homeworlds themselves, while others still were pulled into orbit around the newly formed Eye of Terror. 
other craft worlds did survive for thousands of years before their people finally faded and died. The rest drift throughout the galaxy even today, their exact number uncertain, as contact with and between them is difficult and intermittent. For thousands of years after the fall and into the current day, the craft worlds have carried the greater part of the surviving members of the Eldar race. Craft worlds contain webway gates which connect tunnels in the warp. The webway links the craft worlds to each other, as well as to thousands of planets scattered across the galaxy in the last territory of the Eldar Empire. This, in turn, allows the dispersed Eldar civilization some measure of cohesion. But because the webway is labyrinthine and almost impossible to accurately map, many craft worlds are effectively lost, or simply on their own, unknown and cut away from the greater part of the remaining Eldar civilization. Craft worlds have grown in size greatly since the fall, when they became the sanctuary worlds of the Eldar race. Nowadays, they can be anywhere between 10 and 100 times bigger in both volume and population than they were before the fall. They are also very well named, for they are effectively artificial realms in space, each a self-contained biosystem with forested and natural areas as well as urban ones. The natural areas provide a breathable atmosphere for the craft world and a renewable resource. There are sections of some craft worlds which are uninhabited and awaiting reconstruction. Vast space docks located outside the craft world can house entire fleets of Eldar spacecraft. These fleets are capable of traveling through the warp tunnels of the webway, allowing the Eldar of the relatively slow-moving craft world to bring their forces to areas of the galaxy thousands of light years away. Each Eldar of a craft world is a warrior to some degree. These citizen soldiers are known as Guardians, and they form the Craftworld's Guarding Militia, akin to the Imperium's PDF. Each Craftworld is an independent political realm, sometimes acting in cooperation with other Craftworlds, combining their military might and acting to achieve a common goal, also trading or exchanging knowledge. The Eldar Exodites often trade with their counterparts living on the Craftworlds, but they believe that the Craftworld Eldar are too close to the old ways of decadence for their own good. However, some of the militarily stronger Craftworlds do grant protection to the Exodite Eldar, from attacks by the Orcs, the Dark Eldar, Chaos, and even the Imperium. Although it is known that the majority of the surviving Eldar race does live on a Craftworld or another, it is impossible to say just how many Eldar this actually is. The craft worlds are certainly the seat of the remaining Eldar industry, technology and culture, as they are the only places that contain vestiges of their original homeworlds. Most of them contain special biodomes housing plants and wildlife from the original homeworlds, and these are carefully tended and preserved by the Eldar as a last memory of something they lost. Although each craft world is essentially independent in its action and governance, they will aid and offer advice to one another. Although not common, sometimes they even war with each other, although in the rare occasion that this happens, it is always as a last resort. Last but not least, I wanted to list all the major and minor craft worlds, which I am gonna cover sometime in the future. The biggest and most powerful of them are Alaitok, Diltan, Ayandan, Saimhan, and Ulfwe. Some minor craft worlds include Altanasar, El Kaif, Ibrasil, Kalor, Luganaf, Mimira, and Imlok. There are others outside of these, but most of those have very little lore behind them. Nevertheless, I will talk about them too at some point. Now, in regards to the voting in the comment section of today, I will once again give three options you can choose. Option A more craft worlds lore, and here I'll probably talk about an individual craft world, option B, Eldar vehicles, or option C, more Eldar warriors. Now, I have taken into account that some of you might get sad if their option never actually gets chosen. So, depending on the votes, I might actually implement the results of this one two videos from now, if that makes any sense. 
That way I can cover something else in the meantime, and everyone should hopefully be happy. And this, my friends, has been the relatively short, but hopefully interesting overview of what Eldar craft worlds are. Are you a fan of these countryside spaceships? What do you like or dislike most about them? Would you like to visit one someday? Personally, I definitely would. And hopefully that doesn't mark me as a heretic. If you have any thoughts, questions or opinions on the topic, never hesitate in writing them down in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. Isha's blessings be upon you.